Hey everybody, Michael Lombardo here from Life Poured Out International. Our mission is to reach the lost, ignite the church, and serve the poor. This is Awaken Live. Before we go live, I'm going to go ahead and take the privacy setting off here like I always do so you guys can go ahead and share this. For some reason, it turns private when you stream through BeLive. So let me just go ahead and make that public. All right, we're good to go. You guys can go ahead and share this now. So I've got a cool, you know, a few cool announcements before we get our guest on here today. But um, I just want to say hi to everybody who's joining now. Feel free to comment at the bottom, send prayer requests. Um, let us know how you're doing, where you're watching from. It's always cool to see the different countries or different states that people are watching from. So feel free to do that. Also, next to the comment bar at the bottom, a lot of you know this, but for, for those who don't, there's a share button right there. And you could go ahead and press that so you could show your friends and family this important message. This is something that we all need to know and all need to walk in and cultivate in our lives as believers. Uh, I always pick my guests, you know, um, in the in the leadership of the Holy Spirit, asking him, what do you want people to know? What do you want to release? What do you want to teach and train your people in right now? So this is a very important message. But I want to share with you just something. You know, in the past, I tried to move over my personal friends over to my ministry page because I was getting so much um, response on my public page and not so much on my ministry page, but I just topped off at 5,000 friends. So this is something I tried to do on my own a few months ago, but I didn't really have a lot of know-how in it. So this is something, I got a marketing team now. I've got some specialists to help me with social media, our websites and everything just to get more content out to you, the best way to do it, especially with the book being released. Um, this month actually got released yesterday. So we're really gonna be pushing that this month. So if you're watching, and you're on my personal page, but you're not following our ministry page, we're going to be posting exclusive videos on the ministry page that aren't going to hit the personal page. And I'm going to be posting on the ministry page and just for a month or so sharing it on the personal page because we're trying to transition. So if you're watching and you're a friend of mine, go ahead and like the ministry page. If you put Mike Lombardo in the search engine, it'll come up under the page. Um, it says pages and it'll come up under that section. Also, there's a link on my personal page in the about section where it says all the information about me. So hi, Kathy Bixel. Thanks for watching. The, that that kind of helps segue actually into the next bit of announcements that I want to do. This Saturday is our first immersed conference. It's going to be all day, a power packed day from nine in the morning to around 10 or so at night in Perth Amboy, New Jersey at Shekinah Church. And it's going to be a day of encountering Jesus, just being in his presence, just receiving from him to be filled up, refueled, just to, oh, just to experience him however he wants to encounter you. So it's going to be a powerful time. If you're in the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania area, sign up today. I'm going to be putting a link in the uh, comment and status section. You can just click on it and you could reserve your seat. That's this Saturday. We have a morning session with an amazing prophetic man of God. We have afternoon session with Kathy Bixel. She's watching now. Thank you, Frank Dupree, for watching. Yako, it was great to meet you. Great to see you, Yako, from South Africa. But bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. So we have the Immerse Conference this Saturday. If you're not busy, come on out. Mark Turner, thank you for watching. He's going to be there at the night service praying for you guys. He's a beautiful evangelist man of God. He's got so much fire in his life. And anyway, I love him. So anyways, and the book is released, Immersed in His Glory. And you can get it on our website. But I'm going to be doing a eight-week online course of immersed in his glory so every week i'm going to be doing a short video just sharing my heart sharing the message bringing out some content from the book so you guys have a feel and begin to understand what is in the book so it's going to be a really great time i'm going to be posting about all this stuff so that you guys can be up to date with all of that so anyway I want to get my guest on here today thank you guys who are watching right now go ahead and share this at the bottom but our guest today is Chad Johnson, and he's got an amazing story that he's going to tell you about. I'm so happy about Sean Tabbitt. He introduced me to Chad Johnson, and um, this guy, he had an amazing career. He was making good money, but the Lord called him out to live a radical life of risk and obedience, and he's got a beautiful, uh, powerful ministry that he's going to tell you a whole lot about, so I'm going to get Chad Johnson on the show here now. How you doing, Chad? Hey, Michael. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to, to be here with me. Yeah, you're so welcome. 
It's <laughs> awesome. I sorry. I, the reason I'm kind of like I was like, yeah, you're so welcome. Like I didn't really care was because there was this crazy echo for a second, and so I was waiting to listen. Like, am I gonna echo back? But now it's great. So. <laughs> sorry, I, I'm I'm really stoked to be here, dude. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my joy. It's my pleasure. And for you guys who are watching, I could read the comments here at the bottom. So if you see my, see my eyes bounce every once in a while, it's because I'm looking at comments. You could let me know if there's any kind of feedback, if there's any kind of visual or audio disturbance of any kind, and we'll try to work that out on our end. And sometimes I'll start talking and it'll feedback and it'll kind of throw me off, but it's just a little kinks that we have in social media world working with technology. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. <laughs> fun, fun times. Fun times. <laughs> Exactly. So, Chad, I know there's some people that are watching now and that will be watching that don't yeah. know a whole lot about you and your ministry. So maybe give us um, your backstory and how you started to live this life and and where you're at, whatever you want to share. Sure, man. Well, yeah, it's it is interesting, you know, because I, I think that Jesus has proven his sense of humor through somebody like me because I am the least likely human to have ever had a successful career in in the music, the Christian music industry. Um, I feel like just about anything that has ever happened to me in life, whether it was getting married, ha having kids, um, working in, in music, whether it was uh, the ministry that God's put on my heart now, all of it is just such a shock that that God would pick me. And so, so he is routinely been in the business of picking the foolish ones to shame the wise. And I think that that's, I don't, I don't know if my hand was up a little higher or what happened, but at some point uh, I just, while it, being in the, in kind of in the midst of um, the music world, I just felt like Jesus was challenging me to, to enter into more. And I, I really was kind of living this weird life of uh, working in the Christian music industry, but really not caring at all about Jesus or about people. And and one morning I was driving into the office uh, like any other morning, except it was bumper to bumper traffic in Seattle, Washington. And, and right there, like standstill traffic, I felt like God asked me one question, which is, why are you fighting me? And immediately I just retorted out of this prideful, arrogant position, which is like, what do you mean? Why am I fighting you? Like, like, who are you to talk to me about like that? And, and of course, God in his sweetness and, and his, and also his power just kind of like pierced my heart. And I found myself weeping and just uncontrollably crying on the interstate, hoping that people would not see me, you know, like neighbors wouldn't notice that I'm a basket case in my car. But, but I remember praying something like Jesus do, I'm sorry, I repent, um, change my heart, change my life, do whatever you want with me and write the kind, whatever story you want over my life. And, and, and I don't think I realized then what a dangerous prayer that is. Like, especially when it, when it's, it's one thing just to mouth a prayer. It's another thing to be in a state of having encountered God. And then, and then in his like holiness to say like, I, man, I really, messed it up and I really need help. So please help me. And, and so that's, so he just began putting this desire on me and I, and I began growing with him and desiring him and wanting to spend more time in the word, more time in his presence. And uh, so, so anyway, that, that one encounter, which was, I guess about 13 years ago now has led me to where I am now. And uh, every door that's kind of opened over my life, I can trail back to that one moment a very like otherwise uninspired 8 a.m. morning commute experience. Um, but that that one little prayer time with Jesus was enough to convince me that I wanted to live my whole life for the Lord. <laughs> That's so good. I love how you shared your story. Just openly, just honestly, you were a believer and you were coasting. Yeah. You didn't have a love for people. You didn't have a love for really the word. You weren't on fire. You weren't passionate. No. And how no. he encountered you in the car. You know, God, he'll encounter yeah. you anywhere. I've, I've, I've encountered the Lord in the restroom and my life was changed. I've encountered him in the most ridiculous places. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. He'll get to you if the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. He will. And, and he's, uh, you know, I, I think looking back, I know for a fact that my wife was praying. I know that somebody gave me a copy of of this book by, by a pastor named John Piper. It's called Don't Waste Your Life. And, and I, mm. so I know that there are people 
around me that were interceding for me and that were asking Jesus to do something um, in and through me. And, and yeah, I think that it's it really is remarkable how God is a relational, personal um, individual who desires to know us, you know, and, and for and, and for us to know him, you know, he knows us, but for us to actually realize that that he knows us and for us to know him. Um, so, yeah, that was a that was a very special time and 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 one that I um, still to this day, I'm thankful for, you know, for God's grace uh, to give me. I love how you even highlighted the fact that your wife was praying. There was family praying. We don't realize the, yeah. the power of our prayers that, you know, our prayers right. do accomplish much. The prayers of a righteous man or woman. And you might not see an answer right away. You know, you may be praying for your spouse, your children, loved ones, your pastor, um, whoever you're praying for. You might not see the answers right away, but they are right. effective. And we need to wait and be steady and perseverant in our prayers. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're really, you know, anyway, it's, it's just, you know, even my own life with my family praying, my, my mother, my father, my, my church, you know, mm. feel the effect of the prayers. And, you know, at, yeah. the right time, at the right time, you see the manifestation. So, yeah, yeah, that's right, man. And God, God's timing is, is incredible because, ha you know, had the Lord approached me prior to that, I probably would not, my heart probably would not have been ready. And, and had it been after, I may have screwed up so horrendously that I, that I wouldn't have been there for an encounter. You know, like I, my life was, I was, I was uh, very aggressively pursuing a prideful, arrogant, selfish, uh, porn addicted, drug addicted lifestyle uh, where where the last interest on my heart was Jesus, even though I knew, you know, it's like I knew better. I knew up here that that Jesus is exactly who he claims to be. And I and I I knew the answers. I could say enough in church to convince somebody that I knew what I was talking about and that I was OK. But but my heart um, was really far from God. But thank, thankfully, you know, he's he's the great restorer and redeemer and, and repairer of the breach. And okay. so he came in and, you know, re repaired my breach and, and brought me, you know, brought me back to where he's wanted me. And it's, Absolutely. yeah, I mean, been, been crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> his kindness and his mercy that leads mm -hmm. to repentance. Right. That's Absolutely. so true. Yeah. Absolutely. I thank God for his mercy in my life that led me to a place of repentance, freedom. They're talking about being free from porn addiction and building your yeah. own kingdom, a selfish lifestyle. People need to hear these things, Chad. Yeah. Because we don't talk about these these struggles, you know, in an in a in-depth manner. But there's people right. all over the body of Christ, all over the world that are struggling, and they can be free. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And that's – well, it right. takes one revelation, one moment with the Father that can bring about that repentance that will yeah. lead to a complete shift in lifestyle. Right. Yeah, and it's and for me the the uh, the encounter with Jesus wasn't uh, it wasn't that I was instantly healed of some of the areas. It's like I was instantly healed on some levels, and then on other levels, I was uh, I was it's still been a work in process in, in progress. You know, it's like a, it's been a process that He's been walking me through. But that's the beauty of this thing is it's not yeah. just a, well, dude, I had my one moment. I like the king gave me three seconds and I went in and he put his staff on, on my shoulders and I'm good. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a, it's a father redeeming a lost son. And then, and then saying, Hey, I, I want to actually walk this thing out with you. No matter how screwed up you are, no matter how weak you are, no matter how um, far away you are. And, and I'm going to, and I'm going to help you. So um, so yeah, the Lord, the Lord gave me grace. I ended up after that, I ended up, uh, like having this really, uh, this like second, I guess I began praying fairly consistently, something like Jesus do whatever you want with my life. You know, like, like again, that really crazy kind of praying that we yeah. shouldn't pray if we want our lives to stay normal <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and yet the best kind of praying ever Jesus do, if you're real, do whatever you want. Here I am. Send me, you know, and really meaning it. And so um, I prayed that and I, I was at a conference probably two or three years after the, the car experience, the viaduct uh, Seattle experience. And I was at this conference and during the worship service, I felt like the Holy Spirit, um, not audibly, but but very strongly in my heart said to me, um, I, I'm, I'm going to give you four instructions 
for how I want you to live. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, that's kind of crazy, you know, and, but the whole thing happened so quickly and so sweetly. Uh, and he basically said, one, make your life all about Jesus. Two, stop worrying about money. Three, make disciples of artists and others. And then four, just give your life away. And, and as you know, you know, like I know that you know this because we've talked prior to this conversation, but when you have an experience with Jesus that doesn't make any sense at all to your current position, because at that point I'm a professional music industry guy. I, I, I know that a making life all about Jesus does make sense. B, I'm supposed to worry about money, of course, you know, because how, how else could I be successful if I wasn't worried about money? And, yeah. and then, you know, the C part of like, well, maybe, you know, just I think I'm kind of discipling artist. Uh, and then the giving your life away, I was like, I have no idea what that means. But but ultimately, I had to say, Jesus, I don't think I can do any of those four things apart from grace. So if you want me to do those things, and then give me more grace for them. And five days later, I came home. I, to I had told my wife from the, you know, after coming home from this trip, this is what Jesus put on my heart, these four things. And five days later, I was driving into the office and I just knew that I knew that, that Jesus was saying, trust me. And so I, I called my wife and I said, I feel like, honey, today is the day that I have to quit my job. But if you're not with me, because I'm the sole provider of the family, all of our financial um, responsibilities are on my shoulders. And we had just bought this home. We had just bought a second car. We had relocated from Seattle to Nashville. We didn't have a savings account. We, the, you know, the, the 401k we had was, was pretty small. And so all these, yeah. the, 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 no part of the picture made any sense yeah. other than my heart was just like, Jesus, I, I have to go after you. And so I said, if you're not with me, then I'm not going to do this because I don't believe that God would speak to one of us about something this extreme and not also speak to, yeah. to uh, the, my counterpart, you know, like uh, the, the person who God's put to be my helpmate. And so she said, no, I, I'm, I'm with you. Do it. And I was like, what? You're crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, but that I put in my resignation uh, that day. And, uh, and that's, man, that was, uh, wow. A little over nine years ago um, mm -hmm. that I put in my music industry resignation and, and really just said, all right, Jesus, do whatever you want. Um, and I've been stump, sort of like awkwardly stumbling after Jesus ever since, but yeah. really still praying, Jesus, do whatever you want with my life. You know, I'm here yeah. to help people see that you are who you say you are and, and use, I want my story to be your story and not you trailing mine kind of thing. So yeah. Exactly. And thank God for praying wives that hear from Jesus that are just yeah. as old and just as filled with faith because my wife Absolutely. a year and a half ago and we said, you know what, we're not in the mission field right now, but we just had a baby and we're believing God for a home. But the Lord spoke to us about full-time ministry and stepping out. And she was like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. Let's yeah. Just, let's just go on this ride together and see where it's <laughs> believe God for the miraculous and for breakthroughs and for his hand to just lead yeah. us in every little detail. So shout out to our wives real fast. Yep. Just how how amazing they are! <laughs> well, yeah. I was watching, I think. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> God for that, and also everyone at the bottom. Thank you guys for watching, Sean Tabit. Um, yeah, that Sean guy keeps posting some. He's he keeps <laughs> trying to derail my train of thought. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> for connecting, no, awesome. Sean. We love you, man. You're, yeah, you're awesome. Do. And Chad so, said book One Thousand uh, Risk, and I love this cover. He said it to me too. too. <laughs> so, yo, listen, I know that you shared, I watched a couple of your videos because you did some live videos. You shared your story of kind of how this A Thousand Risk journey began. I know that, you know, it, it started with the leaving your job and, and these encounters you had where you began to change your mind and, and step out of your job into this life. But yeah, you know, I know you talked about even a time where you sat with your wife and had a conversation with her. How did this A Thousand Risk journey begin? And what does that, what does that even mean, A Thousand Risks? Yeah, well, it started much like this conversation over coffee. And uh, <laughs> and I was on a date with my wife. It was December 31st, 2012. So just over five years ago. And I sat while sipping coffee. I said, honey, you know, I I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. I'm a little bit of a, I'm an enthusiast um, uh, on the Enneagram chart personality wise. And so I can come up with 
some pretty outlandish ideas that don't necessarily mean I've heard from God. They just mean I've come up with a wild idea. <laughs> and, uh, and so she's a great, um, she's a, she is the best sounding board that I have readily available in my life to say, honey, what about this? And I, and I, so I told her, her name's Beth, by the way. So I said, Beth, um, what if I took one year and I just tried to pray for as many sick, physically sick and hurting people as I came across? What do you think of that? And I just, you know, I thought for sure she's going to say I was a genius and I had just won, you know, the Albert Einstein award or something. And so, um, so I, um, she, she just looked at me and she said, well, what about all the sick and hurting people that don't show it? And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, why, why'd you have to like shoot, you know, shoot my balloon down? You know, it was such a pretty one. And um, and then she, she had been reading a book called 1000 Gifts by an author named Ann Voskamp out of out of Canada. And she said, what if you took 1000 risks and um, and from those risks, like what if you documented them highs and lows and just share your experience, you know, base. And, and as soon as she said 1000 risks, it was like light bulbs went off, like flashing. It was not, you know, it was just, I just felt the inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Like, yeah, this is right. And so the first thing I did, as soon as I got home, I was like, thank you, honey. And then I started a blog, <laughs> which, which is still alive at 1000risks.com. It doesn't look very sexy. It doesn't, it's not meant to. It's sort of just a, a little like pause of a season of my life where I, where I literally doc took and then documented a thousand different risks and one a couple things i can tell you dude is that one i did not risk perfectly then and i still do not risk perfectly now so there i don't think there is such a thing about it as a perfect risk you know that we're humans you know so jesus is choosing to flow through the michaels and the chads that that are in this glory grace journey and, and so, um, the second thing is that throughout the process of two years, it, it took me 740 days to accomplish the 1000 risk goal. And throughout the 740 days, I experienced more miracles, more people coming to Jesus, more prophetic words, more healings out just out in life, like people coming to my house, dropping off a package and, and, and just like, hey, how can I pray for you? And right there, somebody would get healed or or would get encouraged by the Lord or or simply prayed for. And um, and so I began to, to realize that, man, I I, I wonder after the 740 days, I began to feel like the Lord was saying, all right, now, now write a book. Now, now you've, you've done what you were supposed to now challenge the body of Christ to live on risk in the simplest, uh, most organic from the heart kind of way that, that, that you can. And, and so the, the message really is that it's kind of like, I feel like, uh, rat, uh, have you ever seen the movie, uh, Ratatouille? Mm. This, no, it's, about, it's, it's like this hilarious, uh, chef, you know, chef rat, um, in, in uh, this the unassuming rat that, be, you know, becomes a chef in France and, uh, in Paris. And the theme of the inspiration behind that rat's cooking and, and his abilities is that anybody can cook. And so I feel like God has placed me here saying anybody can take risks. And anybody can develop a life of risk. It doesn't mean it's always going to look like, like, you know, um, what we see on a, on a Darren Wilson film where it's just like, you know, every single star aligned and like Jesus put this person at the right. I mean, it's going to be some of that, but it's also going to be moments where it's just like, Hey, how can I pray for you? And the person's like, no, I'm fine. Like, or whatever, or, or get out of here or leave me alone. And, and, and yet, there's something beautiful about just saying, Jesus, I want to live from a place of love and I, and I want to treat people the way I, I want to be treated. And so teach me how to do that. Yeah. Well, something that we always do, like I want the 
Christ for the Nations Institute for three years and I first got saved and I joined the evangelism team and we were always going out in the streets, starting conversation. I think the hardest part really is just starting a conversation with a stranger. I think that's what we need to walk people through, you know, the most. Like we go out every single uh, week in Perth Amboy and we're always challenging ourselves to just pray for someone or reach out to someone. And when, when we're equipping believers to go out in the streets and pray for people and prophesy and do all this kind of stuff, you know, the hardest part is really for people to just stop a stranger, just to... Right. You know, just just open up a conversation. How do I introduce Jesus really fast? And and you know, so this is uh, even <laughs> yeah, that's it. I love how you said, "How do I introduce Jesus really fast?" Yeah. Which which are two massive pressures. Yeah. A, how do I introduce Jesus, and then B, really fast. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, it's crazy because some people they they you you stop them. They're like, "Why in the world are you stopping me?" So a lot of the time, you have to like let your intentions be known from the very yeah. beginning. You know, and that's. Not, not always the most comfortable thing, just like you talk about fighting fear for an awkward, awesome life with Jesus. I think that's a great subtitle for your book. <laughs> Thank you. So by the way, did I hear did I hear you correctly in you saying that your book is out as of today? Um, Yesterday, actually. Yesterday. That, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. So Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So so how can people get that? And what's I think I pre-ordered it, but how do I make sure I get it? Yeah, no. So I think you ordered it on Amazon, right? Yes. Yeah, if you order on Amazon, I think from yesterday it should be shipping, so you'll probably get it in a okay. few days. But if they go on my website, lifeportoutintl.org, they can get it from us, and we'll ship it out. And, you know, it'll be there awesome. in like three to four days, something like that. But anyway, Dude, oh, congratulations man. to so much. two new, two you know, newbie authors, all excited about their their new books. It's great. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. This is your first book too, right? This is I actually self published a book, and then this is my first oh, time with um with 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 Destiny releasing Immersive. That's right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. That's right. awesome. It's exciting stuff, man. It's really it's yeah. really cool. what a like, what an awesome. honor, right? What a privilege. Yeah. yeah that's, absolutely. That's absolutely. Cool Thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course. This is something in your book, One Thousand Risks, that you mentioned. It's kind of weaved all throughout. You know your books. I've been reading through it. I'm probably three fourths, you know, of of the way through right now. But you talk about leaving the unremarkable old and stepping into the messy, extravagant new, and yeah. you, you use that language over and over again. And I really, I, I, I love it. It's kind of like a beautiful way to put it. But help explain that a little bit, because I know there's some people watching. The Holy Spirit's been one challenging them to step out of their comfort zone, and two, they have no clue how to do it. So I want to give some yeah. practicals in a little bit. But help explain that first. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. You, the fact that you brought it up before we started allowed me to actually find it in the book. So, because I was like, man, I feel like what, you know, the beauty about writing a book is that, and the challenge of doing live events like this um, are that with a book, you can go over your words a hundred times if you want, and you can yes. tweak them over and over and over again. Whereas in this conversational context and the reality of how most risks are taken. You can't like edit your, you know, you can try the best to, to the best of your ability to tweak your words, but ultimately it's like, oh, it's a struggle. So, so here's the, um, so I'm just going to read it to you. In my unremarkable old, I allowed fear to control my actions. I valued safety, comfort, and security higher than a life of risk, hardship, or peril. I did not live to serve others. I was half-heartedly present, and I was the most important person in my life. In the messy, extravagant new, love influences and inspires my actions. Risk, hardship, and peril are valued higher than safety, comfort, or security. Yeah. Living is to serve others. I admit the half-hearted struggle and am discovering the wholehearted present. And then finally, Jesus is the most important person in my life. So really, the, the unremarkable old is meant to be sort of this. I, I tried to, with words, paint who I, who I was prior to surrendering to Jesus and what my life was like prior to. And, and that doesn't mean that I don't ever step into the unremarkable old. Some days... I don't want to pray for anybody. I, I'm selfish or I'm tired or I don't feel well or, or I don't, ha I don't have love in my heart for somebody. And mm -hmm. those are days I have to confess to Jesus, like, sorry, Jesus, today I just have no interest in being like you. And, and, and to actually mean that and say, you know, Jesus, you are, 
the king of the universe, would you please come and soften my heart and give me compassion for others? Um, so the messy, ex- I, I, I felt like I needed with the messy extravagant new to, to describe this kind of like stepping into obedience consistently, regularly, not only in the sense of outreach, like, Hey, let's go. I love outreaches. I love, um, opportunities to, to like, let's all go together and do this. And let's, let's come up with this really cool idea and how to share Jesus. Um, but most of life is not lived on outreach. So my heart was really more about how do I empower the normal everyday person who is like, well, I'm not going to Thailand or I'm not going to um, Sri Lanka or I'm not going to uh, Mexico or to Haiti or wherever on a missions trip. I'm just here in Nashville and I wish that I experienced the kingdom of God right here in Nashville or wherever the person is. And, and yeah. so really the messy extravagant new is a way of saying it's, it's, it is a little bit messy, but it's mostly extravagant because anytime we say, Jesus, I'm willing to, to say whatever it is you want me to. I'm willing to do whatever it is you want me to, no yeah. matter how the exchange goes or how the person perceives us uh, or the opportunity flows out. We are learning to walk in, in obedience. And, and that's the new the newness of what Jesus has called us to. And so I, so thank you for pointing that out. I, I love I, I just felt like I I needed to somehow paint a picture of, of what the old was and what the new was without just saying in the old and in the new, you know, <laughs> that doesn't sound very exciting. You know, my old life and my new life. Well, what does that mean? So, yeah. <laughs> no, so it thanks. Definitely, it definitely does help paint a picture a lot better. And this is something that the Lord, it's, it's always on his heart. You know, he's always wanting to equip the saints, challenge us out of our comfort yeah. zones, touch us to, to be love and to love people. But even this year, I feel like in my life personally, he's been, I had my friend Chris Michelson on who's doing crusades and, and reaching wow. souls on at the very beginning of this year. And we just had Darren Wilson on Awaken Live talking about, you know, and you mentioned him earlier talking about yeah. his filming and how he stretched himself and conquered fear in his life and how he still does. And now I have you on. And even this year, I'm having a lot of evangelists on the show. This is something the Lord's just really pushing. He's surrounding mm. me with a lot of people who have decided to live this messy, extravagant new. And, you know, we get all these prophetic words, and I believe in the prophetic words for 2018 sure. as long as they're in line with what a lot of people are saying that are that are voices in the body of Christ that are, that are legitimate and, and, you know, amazing yeah. servants of God and prophetic people. But one thing God's been speaking to me about is us just not letting the assignments he's given us fall by the wayside. Mm. Not not saying, you know what, Jesus, maybe next week, maybe next month, maybe next year, when he speaks to you about something, now is the time to take up that assignment and run with it. Now is the yeah. time to leave the fear behind, say no to fear, stop partnering with fear, and start saying, I'm moving forward with you, Jesus, no matter how messy it is, no matter how awkward it may be, no matter yeah. how scared, I'm shaking in my boots right now, but I'm right. going to do it because if you're for me, who's going to be against me? That's right. Yeah, that's, dude, that's amazing. You know, and Chad, I, I love your story. That's why I encourage people to get 1,000 risks. But I know mm. there's people watching now and that will watch that um, they want to stretch themselves. They want to yeah. be everything Jesus has called them to be. They, one, don't have a grid for it or don't know where to start. Or, two, right. they're scared out of their mind. So is there is there something that you can encourage them with or maybe some practical things sure. they can do if they say, hey, listen, that's me. I've been in the unremarkable old. And I want to start stepping into that extravagant. Year. Yeah, man, that's a great question. And, and it's something um, it, this 1000 risk really in some ways started prior to um, Beth sitting down, my wife sitting down with me over coffee. And, and when I was in, I, I had the privilege of traveling to New Zealand um, about seven years ago. It was my first time there. It was as beautiful and, and surreal unbelievable, like epic kind of like everything you think it would be. It was, and, and especially in, in the Lord, it was just a really special time for me to grow in Jesus. And so, um, one of the things that I felt Jesus challenging me was to begin praying a prayer that has stuck with me, which is, which is essentially Jesus. Would you give me one person today who I can love? One person today who I can encourage, one person who I can build up, and, and maybe for, for the, the the listener right now, maybe one day feels like, man, that's like that's crazy. Well, that's okay. Just Jesus will give you grace for whatever it is that He's putting on your heart. But I would encourage you to start by saying, 
Jesus, give me your grace. Give me your faith. Give me your hope and your love for one person to take one risk, whether it's a day, whether it's a week, whether it's a month, whether it's a year, and, and trust that he is going to give you an opportunity in having prayed that. He's gonna, you can't pray a prayer bigger than God can answer. That, I don't think that's the, even remotely possible. Um, so step one is just to invite the Holy Spirit in. You know, the Holy Spirit, I admit that I'm afraid. Maybe this huge, maybe someone on, on your show is thinking about taking a massive risk, like going into full time missions or relocating from uh, one city to the next or one country to the next. And it's, and it requires tons of, of uh, confidence in God, financial provision, all these things. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe it's just someone that's like, man, I just, you know, I just want to learn to love my mom or my dad better or, or my sibling that I don't get along with. And so whatever the risk is or whatever the potential challenge is, I would just say start by, by inviting the Holy Spirit to help you with that thing. Um, and then the second, you know, to me, the second thing um, that's really helped me in developing a life of risk and learning to take risk is is the idea uh, from Romans 12 of of outdoing one another in showing honor. So if I if if you were just on the right now, we'll just pretend like I am checking out at the grocery store. You're the guy that's that's you know taking my money, and you've been you've been processing all my groceries. And if I start by saying, Michael, how can I pray for you? You might be like, whoa, that's kind of a weird like out of the out of nowhere question. But if I start by honoring you and saying, Michael. I just love your sincerity and I love your smile and I love your genuineness. And I, I sense that there's a real passion about you and you just, you are such a deep well of passion that others can come to and drink from. Then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit's beginning to fill my lips with words that, that I was not expecting. And then when I say, Hey, how can I pray for you? Is there anything in your life that you would appreciate prayer for anything in your body and your family? Then you're like, man, that guy just encouraged me and built me up. Of course, like, yeah, actually my, 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 like I was, there was one time where I, I asked a, um, a cashier at a, um, uh, supply store, like a, like a, um, why I can't, why am I blanking a, um, uh, like office max, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like at an office max. And, um, I asked the lady, how can I pray for you? And she looked at, Her eye, like her whole demeanor shifted and she goes, this is crazy. And I said, what, what's going on? And she says, right, literally right this minute at 830 AM, which it was on the, like on the, the, what's that? Do you know that phrase <laughs> on the stop on a dime? I don't know. I can't think of it. I, I grew up as a missionary kid overseas. I don't know Americans, um, you know, <laughs> phrase. So anyway, it was like perfectly 830 and, yeah. um, and my son is having is a singer and he's having surgery on his throat. Can we pray for him? And I said, man, of course we can. So we held hands together. We pray. She, in turn, looks to the next person in line and says, how can I pray for you? And the person's like, that, that was so crazy. So then it just turns into this beautiful Jesus moment. And um, so I would just say, A, ask the Holy Spirit for help. Invite Jesus um, to, to give you grace and, and then to just start by honoring someone and just picking out the smallest thing. Hey, I, I love your, you know, oh, your hair looks awesome or I whatever it is. Just just uh, ask Jesus even really quickly, like, what's a tiny little thought, you know, on the dot, 830 on the dot. Thank you, Rosa. <laughs> that's why that's why it's a team effort around here. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, man. So that's, that's cool. You give a lot of practical examples of you know what it looks like, and I'd like to hear even a few more stories from you before we end this broadcast because I think it's sure. really important. Like we just we just went out on the streets, and I've got two examples even, and you could share some examples too of where it went really well and then where it went yeah. really wrong. Where it's like we're just walking around, and I felt in my heart like God really loves this person. I just felt a love in my heart that. That, that, that wasn't natural. It just didn't come from me. So I just said, you know what? Let me just stop this guy. So I said, hey, man, I'm a Christian. Um, is there any way I can encourage you or pray for you? 
And he was like, you know what? There's a lot of hard stuff in my life. And as he was sharing, I was just listening like in, internally. I was like, Holy Spirit, yeah. what do you want to say? And yeah. I saw a picture of him going down this path. And I knew internally that it was like this, this destiny path that the Lord is trying to lead him on. Wow. And I began to encourage him that you're going to start taking steps down your destiny path. And as I was sharing all these just encouraging things I was feeling from the Lord, um, his, his eyes just lit up and he started to tear up. And he was like, how do you know these things? I'm, I'm making big moves now. And I feel like this is what I'm called to do. And we just prayed for him. He just felt the sweet sense of the Holy Spirit. And, and we walked away and it was like, wow, that was a God moment. And then yeah. we walked by the train station and there was a, a man who looked homeless down there. And I said, hey, man, I'm a Christian. Is there any way we could pray for you? And he was like, no, I don't want prayer. I don't need prayer prayer from you hypocrite Christians and I was like and I felt in my heart like there's a calling on your life and you know it I felt it so strong and I was like man there's a calling on your life you grew up in church your grandmother prayed for you and he was like stop it stop it he almost got like violent and I was I was like okay I'm not here to start trouble I'm just here to say that Jesus loves you there's a plan for your life and he was like I don't want to and he started like almost getting violent with me and I was like yeah yeah I was like you know what I was like God bless you man that's it I don't want to cause any problems I just want to tell you that and he was like okay all right and it was like, okay, well, that, that may have seemed unsuccessful and that may have seemed right. crazy, but you know what? We still dropped love. We still yeah. dropped the word. We still use the name of Jesus. And who knows what the Lord will do with that seed? That's right. And, you know, even in your book, I want to read something from your book, if you don't mind. I think this no, is- really- No, I don't mind. It's, be- it's better you reading it than me. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about whenever I experience more awkward than awesome, like miss word thoughts or avoid risk altogether. I'm reminded that making messes out of obedience to Jesus far outweighs never attempting anything extravagant in his name. Yeah. And then you go on to say, and you end this chapter with obedience is worth the awkward and the awesome. Mm. And um, I love that obedience is worth the awkward and the awesome. We will have yeah. awkward moments, but a lot of the times it'll become awesome. And you talk about that in the book. Sometimes it starts yeah. awesome, becomes awkward. Maybe share a couple stories and help explain that. Yeah, yeah, I'll share. Yeah, so a friend of mine coined that phrase, awkward, awesome, as it relates to me and Uh, risk-taking. And so because he, my friend was a is a filmmaker and he's filmed some stories with us. And and so he's like, man, you know, there's most of the time your risks start a little bit awkward and most of the time they end pretty awesome. And that's not true always because there's exceptions to the rule. But generally speaking, when, especially when we approach strangers, like where there's no, uh, like in my opinion, the hardest risk to take is, is to be on the streets and just randomly go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm a Christian. How can I pray for you or encourage you? That That is a huge risk in comparison to a st- still important but slightly easier risk, which is to begin a conversation with the barista or the the server at the restaurant or the person where you're already dialoguing. So one of the one of the starting points to risk, I would say, is just asking someone's name. So the next time you sit down at a, at a restaurant for a meal, ask your waiter or your waitress their name and just start with that. Like, hey, what's your name? And where are you from? And what are you doing? And what, what are you excited about? And just get to know them and, and get to, get to, um, explore their story. And it's amazing how Jesus will open it up, you know, from there. So I'll, I'll share an awkward story to start and then I'll, I'll share an awesome one. So the most awkward story I think that I have, I have several pretty awkward ones, but the most awkward one was probably the time where I felt very strongly in my heart that Jesus was telling me that this large, well-built African-American man seated at a Mexican restaurant booth all by himself was called to be a leader and someone that God wanted to raise up in a position of authority. And and I was like, I was like, okay. I, I was like, In my heart, I was like, okay, that's what the Lord's saying. I don't know for sure that it's Jesus, but I have no way of knowing without just taking the risk. So I went over and I sat down across from this man in the booth. So it's kind of like you and I sitting across. He, he, I think we had just like dipped a chip in salsa or something and put it to his mouth and and he looked up and there I was just sitting there and I'm all ahead, (laughs) you know, like, but I I said, before I could even say, Hey, I think I said, Hey man, I I feel like God. And then I was about to say once to say this. And he he just looked up at me. He said, he said, I'm only going to tell you this one time. 
you get the F away from my table right now, or I am going to beat the S out of you. And I was like, uh. I was like, okay, I will take Come you on, up man. on that advice and I will leave your table. So I just got up. I said, man, God bless you. Have a great day. And I yeah. was like, you know, of course, kind of like, oh, I can't believe I did that. And you know, the, what I learned from that experience was that I, I should have humbled myself. I should have knelt down next to his table. I should have said, excuse me, sir. I don't mean to interrupt your, your lunch, but I just can't help but feel that God wants to communicate something to you. May I share this with you? And so what I've learned since then that oftentimes I'll ask someone's permission first. And then, and then if they say, sure, then I'll say, can I, is it okay if I sit down with you really quickly? You know, that way I'm honoring them and not yeah. invading his space. So a, a lot of the reason that that risk went so wrong was because I invaded his personal space. It was, you know, before it, it even came to like talking about what Jesus wanted to say. And, and, mm -hmm. um, a really, you know, there's so many awesome risks that I struggle to know which one. So Holy Spirit, which one would you most appreciate me sharing and which one would be the most encouraging to, to build people up with in the time that we have? And um, this is the struggle because I, I didn't, I of course was like thinking about it a little bit, but but I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, just be quiet and, and listen. Mm -hmm. And um and so that's what I'm doing. So uh, I'm taking a risk and not just giving you the rehearsed answer, but just asking the Holy Spirit to show me the one um, that that I might not normally or naturally think of. So the I, the one that that sticks with me um, is not necessarily the most remarkable of of risks I've taken, but it was really special. And it was a Sunday morning where um, before church. A Amazon delivery guy with long, Asian looking, long hair and a ponytail brings a box to our house. And I had just taken our dog outside and I noticed him come up. And so I went over to his car and I, and he got out. He gave me the box and, and, um, and I, everything in me was saying, do not ask him if you can pray for him. Do not pray for him. Do not share a word. You know, like I just felt this really intense, uh, anti kind of thing. And so I, I just, I don't know, I just finally was like punch a friend of mine says, you got to punch through the awkward. And so by the grace of God, I punched through the awkward and I just said, Hey man, how can I pray for you? And, and right then <laughs> he says, he, he just looks at me and he's like, man, that's like the sweetest thing anyone's ever said. He's like, I miss going to church because I'm, I'm doing this Amazon delivery thing. And I just, I just want like to have church right now. And so <laughs> in my mind, I'm thinking this guy doesn't want to hear about Jesus. This guy's like going to be really hard. You know, like this turns out he's a believer that just needed some encouragement. And so I just like, man, how he said, you know, I, I feel like I need courage in my life. And I and I'm really struggling um, to believe that I that there's purpose in my life. And so what happened? I get to begin praying purpose over his life, encouraging him. By the end, he's like, dude, we just had church. And I said, yeah, we did. And we're two or more gathered there. Jesus is with them in their midst. And so I just feel like to, to encourage uh, anyone watching this or listening to this, that that's the sometimes we're looking for the most dramatic story when really what Jesus is wanting is just our simple obedience right. to say, how can I pray for you? How can I pray for you is the risk that I most often take. And it's not sexy. It's not super prophetic. It's not crazy. Like, Oh man, did you hear the, that new trick Chad has up his sleeves? It's just like a little tiny sliver of my heart, hopefully a slice of God's that, that is, how can I pray for you? Like, can I even for a moment enter into where you are and in, in, in your story? And can I invite Jesus to meet you? And so, yeah, that's um, the yeah. man, the Lord, the Lord continues to challenge me because 1000 risks wasn't just a 740 day journey, but it, it's meant to be a lifelong calling. So can I, can I very quickly share one of my crazy dreams and then you can, you and this community can be praying with me for the fulfillment of this dream. Uh, I basically had a friend challenge me and he said, Hey man, what if your next book is called 1 million risks? And I was like, dude, you're crazy. Like that's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard because 
I, I like a thousand risks took 740 days. Like I can't even do the math in my head, but he said, no, what if it's not about you? What if it's about Jesus raising up a thousand different people that all are willing to take a thousand different risks and that document their own stories with the Lord and what he's doing and, and how the highs and the lows. And, wow. and then the book is really just you capturing their, their story. So you, I, I, I believe it was you last week prophesied um, a little bit over me to the extent that God was really like challenging me to dream bigger. Mm. And if I'm honest, it's really hard for me to sometimes dream having just gone through the editing process, the nuts and bolts of release, self-publishing a book and, and yeah. like kind of living in the, in the minutia, you know, like in the, like, uh, there's so much stuff like, I, like, okay. A million people like that's crazy. But, um, I think that Jesus, I believe that Jesus really does want to challenge all of us, probably way more than a thousand of us to take way more than a thousand risks throughout our lifetime. And, and what a beautiful sight, you know, for the body all over the world to just be loving on people for Jesus. Chad at the bottom, Sean Tabbitt said, it's a movement, bro. And my wife, <laughs> my wife's watching. She said, I'll join you. And I'll nice. like, <laughs> well, there you go. You know what? Maybe, maybe we should join Chad and be a part of this uh, thousand risks, you know, movement here. But I really, I truly believe in it. I truly wow. well, believe in it. The body of Christ needs to take practical steps every day. Even like Heidi Baker says, stop mm. for the one, love the yeah. one in front of you. That's yeah. it. If you just love one person a day, that's just challenge yourself to do that. Don't challenge yourself yeah. to pray for every single person you see, to love right. every single person that you bump into a day because that's a lot of legalistic pressure that you're putting on right. yourself. Right. Just challenge yourself to love one person a day. And sometimes it'll be several and that's great. Yeah. Right. But you know, you got to start somewhere. And I, I believe that the Lord will surround you with people that believe in this. And so we're definitely going to pray for you. And before, cool. actually, before we pray for you, as you know, those who are watching right now and myself, how about you pray for some people who are watching? Yeah. Just whatever you feel that in your heart to pray, and then I'll join you and we'll pray for you as well. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Well, Lord Jesus, uh, we just invite you to direct our praying right now. And um, first of all, Jesus, I pray that nobody um, would feel an ounce of pressure to begin taking risks so that they would gain favor with you. So I pray, Lord, against that works-based religious spirit that attacks all of us, including me, where on the good days and I take a bunch of risks, I'm like, man, I'm a great Christian today. But then on the bad days where I don't take any risk, I'm like, I'm a horrible Christian. And Lord, that's a lie. I, I, none, none, none of us are better or worse followers of Jesus based on what we do other than simply repenting, giving you our lives, surrendering to you and saying, Jesus, make of my life whatever it is you want. So I just invite you, Jesus, right now for everyone who's listening, for everyone who's thinking about whatever, I believe everybody listening has some risk that they could take or maybe should take that, that is probably coming to mind. And, and it looks different for every single person. I just pray, Jesus, that you would, by grace, through faith, empower every individual who's watching this to take the risk, to, well, to receive confirmation, first of all, that yes, this is from the Lord, do it. And then two, that they would have the grace to do it. So I just pray for a huge risk impartation that stands the test of time and, and that stands up against all of the challenges that might come against us when we say yes to you. So Jesus, would you just fill, I just pray for tons of hope and encouragement and joy to be poured out into the lives of everyone watching this right now, that it, no matter what their discouragement, their depression, their hesitation, their frustration, their anxiety, their stress, their whatever, that they would just feel right now a infilling of the power of the Holy Spirit to give grace for the moment. And um, just thank you for who you are in this time. We love you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And I just thank you, God, for Chad and his heart that you've just put so much grace on his life in this season to release this book and also the radical, outrageous um, things that he's going to be doing in the future that he's going to need just wholehearted reliance and dependence on you, Father. I just thank you that if you're breathing life on this a million 
risk journey, God. I just thank you that you will make it happen in Jesus name. And just like Sean's habit said at the bottom, he only needs 996 more people because he just got a few right here. So I just thank you, Lord, in Jesus name for opening all the right doors for him. I just thank you, Father, that he's growing in favor with you and in favor with man. I thank you that you would open doors for his book to go to crazy parts of the world that he never even would have imagined. I thank you that this message is resonating in the hearts of people all over the globe in Jesus name. And that you would surround him with people who believe in it and who will run with him. And I thank you, God, in areas where he's not necessarily naturally gifted, that you would just surround him with more people that could just take some burdens off of him so he could focus on what he's best at doing in Jesus' name. I thank you for doors in the church to equip the saints, and I thank you for more souls than ever before, one, because of his ministry. And I thank you, Father, that even there would be a greater release and a manifestation of healing, of prophecy, of signs and wonders, a greater increase of love in his heart, that he would excel even more in the love of Jesus Christ, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And I just thank you, God, for your power, your love, just uh, confirming the word that he brings, Lord, everywhere he travels for your name and for your glory in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That While we were praying and, and you reminded me of Sean's, um, we only need 996 more. <laughs> there, there actually is a Facebook group called 1000 Risk, Take a Risk, Leave a, or Take a Risk, Share a Risk. And there's yep. a little thing on there. I think there's there's already uh, a, a few handfuls of people. So we actually need less than 996 now. Yep. But if for anyone who's like, I want to do this, then then that that I think will be a really encouraging resource in yeah, in, so, um, in the. In so the what journey. exactly is that again for people who are listening that want to do that? Where where can they go to find that? So it's if they search Facebook for 1,000 risks, a little page will pop up that says take a risk share a risk and that if they click on that there's just a bunch of other people posting risks and sharing stories and praying oh. for each other and it's it, it's a really it's a it's the early starts of a cool online risk community awesome i love yeah. that i highly encourage yeah. everybody to get involved in doing that i'm going to look that up and i'm going to join that as well but um 1000 risks i highly recommend that you get a copy of it to stir your faith to fill you with love and hunger and expectation for this life of risk that you're going to start taking. It's going to be incredible. So where can they get a copy of this book and how can they find out more about your ministry? Yeah. So, so right now, ironically and perfectly, it's on sale at Amazon and, and I think everywhere online, it's only $5 for the paperback and $5 for the, for the Kindle version. And um, I think anywhere that they, they would normally buy books, they can find it, especially online. And then to, to learn more or hear more of my story, you can visit chadisliving.com yes. or the ministry that I'm a part of is comeandlive.com. So bo both of those places are, are uh, yeah, encouraging sites to, to build people up by. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chad, for joining and taking the time out. And I'm going to be, Dude, of course, these website links in the comment and status section so people could easily go to them. And um, I look forward to getting to know you more, Chad. Hopefully meet you in person. You too. I'd love yeah. to know you more. Yeah, same. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Bless you and, and everything you're doing. I'm th I'm thrilled. And and let's just, man, let's all pray really quickly for your book. So Jesus, yeah. um, for Michael's book that dropped yesterday, would you use it as a bomb in people's lives to understand your presence, your nearness, your your ability to work through and with anything um, yeah. like only yeah. you could. So yeah, do whatever you want there. And thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, that's awesome. Great. Yeah, dude, I'm thrilled. I'm so thrilled for you. I'm stoked yeah. for the book to show up. Yeah, really cool. Really cool. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. So, hey, I'm going to just do a couple announcements here, but thank you okay. again. You're welcome. See you, bro. All right, thank you, man. All right everybody. This was Awaken Live. Um, it was a really incredible show. We went about an hour because, man, there was just a lot of great things to share here today. But I want to remind you guys, like I did in the beginning of the show, if you're a friend, on my personal page, go ahead and like the ministry page because I got a marketing team now that's helping me do that transition because we've topped off on the personal page. I'll be sharing more on the ministry page. And then on top of that, if you're in the area, come to Immersed Conference this Saturday from nine in the morning all the way at night. It's just one power pack day, just set apart to encounter him, be transformed, to go into 2018 with fire, with zeal, with passion, just to be more free than ever before. That's a great teaching, impartation time. It's going to be really incredible. And you could also get a copy of Immersed in His Glory, a supernatural guide to experiencing and abiding in God's presence. You can get that on our website. I'll put the link in the comment and status section. 
as well as on Amazon, Kindle, and anywhere books are sold, really. You can go to destinyimage.com and get an eight-part e-course as well, and then it comes with a free book if you buy the e-course. So you can go to destinyimage.com, and you'll be able to find that as well. If you want to go to our website for booking information, my wife and I, we travel domestically and internationally, preaching the gospel, igniting the church, reaching the law, several evangelistic outreaches, pouring into the body, Bible schools, conferences, churches. So you can find out a lot about what we do. You can partner with the ministry. You could invite us to, to do whatever. But anyway, we just love you guys. We are so invaluable to us at Life Poured Out International. And I, um, I'll be seeing you very, very soon. God bless you guys.